Hi guys, I hope everyone is okay during these trying times of COVID, the pandemic taking a hold again. But I wanted to show something that I have been working on for quite a while, uh, which is this. Um, basically, it's a, it's a character sheet for your town, but it is not a world building tool. It is more like a tool for the game master to like enhance the narrative and provide more storytelling based on how players interact with towns and so on. But I wanted to show you guys how I'm using this tool. Um, so over here in the gray box, you can see all types of, I call them main stats uh, of the city. It, it is divided into crime, culture, education, order production, and so on. And I will go through them later when, when I get to that point. Up here we have like um, the name of the city, we have what size it is, what age, the terrain and the modifier it gives. We have a fame track, which all of this I will um, explain in depth later, but just to give you a quick overview. We have like the specialty of the town, uh, agricultural, cultural, educational, industrial, mercantile and militaristic. Each one of these provide their own unique benefits and own unique uh, restrictions to the town. We have districts, NPCs, we have import and export, we have factions in the town, and we have recent events. So this is like the main page that you'll be using with this tool. You can go on and add some other pages later, which I will also show you when we get that far. But let's kick off. Um, to start off, we will grab a D6. So we have a D6, let me just do this. We have a D6, and we will roll the size of our town. We roll the one, which will give us a hamlet-sized town. So we will write hamlet up here. A hamlet town gives us 9D4, and it gives us 2D6 plus 2. So let's roll the 2d6. We use the dice to write in the number over here. All right. So let's see the first one and the second one. Both got a five. So I think we will write uh, the production will be five. Whoops. Production will be five. And the, mm, the tra trade will be five also. <clears throat> Now we only have D4s left. Um, it's a two. Two. A three. A three. And a one in military. Two in order. And four in recreation. We have a one in wealth. And two in worship. All right, the next thing we do is to say how many lives in this town. And we can have a max, when it's a Hamlet-sized town, we can have a max of 100 inhabitants in this town. So I'll write 78 here. And this town can be up to 150 years old. So we write 148. All right. Uh, the next part we will go through is the development points. So you can see over here, that is the main way for your players to influence Crime in this town, for example. So when we roll development, roll a d4, and it'll progress along these three dots. And when it gets the four dot, it'll get to the next level. All right. So let's just roll development. It's one, three in education, three in health. We have a three in military. So this can also be a, a cue to where your players might want to influence the town. So it's very, very near going to the next level in health, for example. That could be a cue for the players. All right, sorry about that. We have a two in order. We have a four in production. So that's oops, straight to the next level. That goes to six, but gets zero points in development. We have a three 
in recreation. We have one in trade. We have three in hell. Wealth. Another. We have a one in worship. All right. Next up, we have a terrain modifier. And to do our terrain modifier, we will roll a d20. Uh, let me just grab one here. That one. And we will roll a d4. All right. The d20 will give us our main feature, which can be Arctic, desert, forest, grassland, and so on. And when you have rolled your main feature, you can the d4 will roll your secondary terrain, which will give you, for example, if we roll a 1 on a d20, that's Arctic. Then we roll a d4, which gives us the secondary terrain, which can be coastal, glacier, glacier river, or upland tundra. Okay. We roll the 9. Let's see what that is. We have a lake as our main feature. All right. And a lake gives us plus two modifier. And the plus two modifier goes straight into any one of the main stats. So let's say that the lake benefited our military and it goes straight to three. All right. We will now roll. Oh, there we go. We will roll our secondary terrain modifier, which gives us development points. And it's a two. All right, let's see. It's a nine, so it's a lake. And two, we have a large island. All right. So this city, uh, we need to name it something. We, we can call it B. Bob. Something like that. B. Bob is in a lake, is in on a large island in a lake. Uh, we have now, we now have, because it's on a large island, I will refer to like this table I have over here. Large island gives me plus one development points. And let's just put that into order. So order is also very close to being developed to the next point. All right. Now we will proceed to all of these buildings here. The way you fill in buildings is that you take the main stat. And for every two points, you may place one point in the buildings uh, that are listed here. And down in the bottom, it has a, a, a building quality. So no points gives a forlorn, one is poor, two is simple, three is pleasant, four is wealthy, and five is noble. All right, crime. We have one, so we will have like a black market in this town. But it's poor. Um, culture, we also have a one. Let's place a tavern in here. Three. Education still only gives us one point, but if it rises to the next level, we get another point and can place another building. So that may be an incentive to the players to do something about the education in this town. Let's place a school in here. Three health, still only one. Have a monastery outside of town. Barracks, still only one. We can have a moat around the city. Basically have that. So we'll have a large island, have some moat, and then a lake around it. Uh, or let's give this town a small prison. Hmm. Production six. We have three points here. So mines, that, that could be interesting. But let's place an alchemist. That is pleasant. Um... Recreation, we have four. So let's have a nice park in here. Or simple park. Trade. We can place a harbor here because it's on a lake. That's what this uh, apostrophe means. Uh, so we let's play, uh, place a harbor here. And it can have... It can have two. It'd be a simple harbor. But it's there. Uh, otherwise, it would be interesting on how you would like to get to the island. Um, one in wealth, there's no wealth in this town. Worship, and we can have, like, let's put one in a sacred place. Now we go to our city specialty. So what specialty is this town? We will now grab a d6. We roll a two, which means this is a cultural town, but it's at the moment not 
very significant, but it could maybe grow. So let's see. When I roll a culture channel, I can choose one of the four and add one of that category. The category is over here, like the main stats I told you before. So we have, I can put one in culture, education, recreation, or worship. Let's see. Let's, let's put one in worship so that now is free. And I'm going to place plus one in two of the following buildings. In the inn, statue, bath, and temple. So let's have a temple. And let me place, let's also have bath. It's poor, so you kind of don't want to take a shower there. All right. The fame track is how your players will affect the town. So if they will start here, and they can become more infamous and they can become more famous. So let's say they had started out by being very infamous in this town. That means that for every development point you get, you'll subtract two from that. So that could mean that they will do like the best option, which help the, helps the town, but because they're infamous, it will actually degrade the town. And vice versa with the famous track, um, they will get more points when they try out to help out this town. But this is again up to you as a game master on how to use this track. Uh, it could be a bit punishing to have minus two, but you reap what you sow, I guess. Down here you have import and export. I kind of want this, now we're getting into development. This is not done yet. But I want the import and export to be tied to production in some way and to be tied into what's available. Um, factions, still not done. But let me show you something. If I wanted to have an NPC in this town, this is not uh, done so, but let me just see if I can find it here. We have the NPC sheet here. The area of influence is basically what main stat of the city is he influencing uh, so he can be recreational and this guy is like the guy who controls the baths for example we have three circles here which is the the way you can influence this dude so we can have him being uh, influenced by lust and this could be uh right now i have no system for this but this could be a five and you would not be likely to influence by this, by this. But if it's a 20, he will be very likely to be influenced by this, for example. And again, you have like the development points so you can persuade him in some way and track the progression of the story on this dude. Um, down here we have the plot regarding this character and we have the optional rewards that he might give depending on how the players... Uh, resolves the plot of this character. But the cool thing is that this is modular. So if I had made another town, I have another town here called Osprey, which is the capital. Uh, it's in the tundra and it's on rails and stuff. But if this character wanted to skip town, I could just take him from behind this sheet and put him over here. So now he is like the part of the story in this town because he had skipped town. This is kind of it, really. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, I really enjoyed this tool. Um, I hope you find it useful as well. Uh, I'll share the link so you can just download it for free. Uh, stay safe out there. Thank you.